This is my one chunk account, Chunk Yanil. I've been locked to the city of Yanil for the past six months, and in that time I've been training, skilling, and exploring all the old and forgotten content in this area, but never before have I encountered a challenge like the one I'm about to show you. Buckle in, because this one's a wild ride. The map of RuneScape is divided into chunks. As a one chunk man, I'll have to complete all tasks in a chunk before moving on to the next. And I'll be starting right here in Yanil. Welcome back to Yanil. Before we jump in, let me catch you up to speed. Last episode, I did a deep dive on the Yanil Agility Dungeon as I tried to learn every detail there is to know about this obscure location. As it turns out, there's a few more fun facts I discovered that I'll share later on. The Chaos Druids found in this dungeon gave me the runes to train my magic up to level 43, unlocking Superheat Item which will become super relevant for today's goals. This is where the chunk tasks left off. My plan this episode? I'm gonna complete everything in the Skilling tab. But that's not going to be as easy as it sounds. Superheat will help me hit my smithing goal, and agility is just a slog, but 50 range is going to be tricky. I'll be honest, when looking at this chunk, I didn't even realize I had to train range at all. But it turns out that the hunter shop in Yanil sells this bad boy, the hunter's crossbow. It requires 50 range to wield and can only shoot special bolts made from the hunter skill. So what's the problem? Well, I have no bow, no crossbow, and no way to craft either one. This means that the only way to train my range is through throwing knives, which I'll have to smith myself. That's why Superheat Item is so important. A few episodes ago, I spent almost 40 hours luring and killing dwarves, painstakingly racking up these smithing supplies over 4,000 kills. The dwarf grind was its own special hell, but thankfully I'm done with that. I hope. I've got three big smithing milestones. Level 7, when I can make bronze knives, 15, when I can smith iron, and 22, when I can smith iron knives. I've been patiently collecting these supplies, not using any until now, and I'm hoping my patience will pay off. You see, I've carefully calculated just how many ores and bars I'll need to smith just the right number of knives to get to 50 ranged, but that means I need to make sure that all of my supplies go towards knives. Level 1 to 7 requires about 50 bronze bars, which would all be wasted but that's why I've been waiting. I now have almost 110 ore which I can superheat, gaining small amounts of smithing XP that should get me just about to level 7 without smithing a single bar. And remember, these 110 ore took me almost 40 hours to get, so this is a big deal to me. It's almost as big a deal to me as the sponsor of today's video, Southern New Hampshire University. Seriously, this one is actually really important to me because I literally went there. Like, this is my actual, literal degree from the game development program. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country, and they were amazing to work with as I got my bachelor's degree. Coming in with zero background in programming or game development, I learned to code starting with Python, Java, C Sharp, and finally C++, which is a language used most in Unreal Engine, which I use to create these games you're seeing now. Rather than telling you about SNHU, let me show you what an assignment looks like. Loading up Unreal Engine. For my final project, I had to create a bunch of games, including this one. It's a 2D side-scrolling platformer, but when you come to the edge, the world rotates around you and now you're facing a new direction. And let me tell you, these types of mechanics are not simple, but thanks to SNHU, I was able to learn the math and programming skills needed to work out these complex algorithms. Aside from the material, probably the best part is that it's all radically affordable. SNHU has some of the lowest online tuition rates in the nation. I have so much more to say about SNHU, but for now, I just have to tell you to go to snhu.edu slash josh, my very special custom link, it's in the description, to see what the current average annual salary is for a programmer and request free information about the program. I know when I first reached out, I immediately got connected with somebody on the phone and they answered all my questions. I'd also be happy to tell you more about my experience, so feel free to drop a comment or find me on Discord and we can chat. Now, back to RuneScape. All right, here we go. We've got all of our stuff for super heat items, so it's time to just make a whole bunch of bars with this. There's level two smithing. Can make bronze maces, get a little bit of prayer bonus if we want that. That might actually be kind of useful. And there's three, four, five smithing and 44 magic. Wow, that's crazy. Two and one. I knew this part was going to go fast. We're already almost through the ores. And there is six smithing. And this is me withdrawing the last of the tin ore. We're just barely not going to make it to seven, but we got as close as we could. So that's okay. The final tin ore. 
This took so many hours to collect and they're gone just like that. There's my 337 bronze bars. Very nice. So now that means that we are going to make a bunch of bronze knives. So let's go ahead and do that. I think we will make this one bronze mace. And there we go. That is the important, important, important level. Seven smithing we can make bronze throwing knives. This is how we're going to get all the way to 50 range, which is crazy. I hope it works. I'm not sure yet. At this point of recording this, I have no idea whether we're actually going to get to 50 range off these, but I am hopeful. Bronze knives. Bronze knives. More bronze knives. And there it is. 15 smithing. That is huge. We can now smelt iron ore. Let's go. I'm going to finish the bronze bars up before moving to the iron ore, but it's really nice having that unlocked. 16 smithing. We can make ourselves some bronze plate legs. I think I might actually do that. I don't know if I'll ever have an option to get this leg slot item, so I think it might be time to make ourselves some legs. There we go. One set of bronze plate legs. It's so funny that that's an upgrade for me, but it is. 17, 18, 19. That is 20 smithing. The next important milestone is 22, which unlocks iron knives. So hopefully we can get there with all of our iron ore smelting. And there they go. The very last bronze bar has been smithed. And we have 1,660 bronze knives to throw. Pretty good, but we'll have more than that once we turn our iron bars into knives as well. So let's get started on that. Here we go, and there it is. The iron bar has been smithed. That's another chunk task checked off the list. And there it is, a super important level 22 smithing. We can make iron throwing knives. So now we have access to both types of throwing knives without having wasted any iron bars because we used this superheating technique. And we even snuck in there another magic level 45. Insane that is done. Those took so long to get. It's time to smith them as well. And there's 26 smithing. We can make iron chain bodies. Now, it's not an upgrade, but I need to make an iron chain body. I don't care if this sets me back. Like, come on. Yo, uh, what's going on, guys? You, uh, defended Yanil from any ogres lately? Oh, no, no, you just, you just stood around these same couple of squares like you usually do? Yeah, say, I mean, say, I mean, same, same. Just been standing here. 27 smithing. I honestly didn't think we were going to get this far. Iron kite shields. That's super good. That's my new best shield slot for sure. I have to save some bars for that at the end. All right, I'm going to save these five iron bars in the bank just in case I want to make something else in the future. And hopefully we can get to level 50 range with the knives that we've already created. I ended up with 2,605 knives in total. So it's time to find out. Is this enough to get to level 50 range? Can I turn 2,605 knives into the 101,333 XP needed? Well, as you're about to see, this is a question even I didn't fully understand at first, and there's no way I could have predicted how it would turn out. Let me lay out the plan. It's called Operation Obliterate Innocent Men and Remove Jig Gig from the Game Files. Honestly, I'm not sure if we're going to get to that second part, but it's the first part that's important because we are back to torment the men of Yanil in my favorite piano house. This is a key factor to the plan though, as I spent a long time and a lot of very complicated math calculating how to achieve level 50 range. One of the biggest factors is the abysmal range defensive men coming in at a cool negative 21. This should make my knives very accurate even from a low level, maximizing the XP per knife. However, if my calculations are wrong, I have to go back to dwarf jail and waste more time and magic supplies luring them again, which is especially bad as I plan on unlocking a brand new hyper efficient magic training method by the end of this episode. So I need to save up all the runes I can get until then. That's the long way of saying that if I run out of knives, I'm going to be really annoyed. Let's do this. They're not he's bad. I am the kid. First knife thrown. Boom. Oh yeah. Ranged XP. Let's go. And there is the first range level, level two. This is going pretty slow, but it could be slower. I'm starting off using accurate style because that invisible range boost makes a huge difference for accuracy at these early levels. There's level nine ranged and 700 total level. One could say that Josh is in fact gaming. All right, I just hit level 10 and I'm starting to get a little suspicious of my original calculations. <laughs> I know it's early, but let's just take a quick look at the numbers. At this point, I've used just around 100 knives, or about 3.8% of my total knives. 
At the same time, I've only gained just over 1% of the total XP needed. That's a difference of 2.7%. Not the best, but it's still very early into the grind and I can only max hit a 2, so I did expect the XP to lag behind at first. And there's 15 range. We can now max hit a 3, which should help, but the numbers are still concerning. At this point, 6.6% of the knives are gone, with only 2.4% of the XP gained. That's a difference of 4.2%, which is more than last time. Oh, also, I almost forgot that I wanted to be juggling my easy clue. I got this Yanil step in an earlier episode and it's been sitting in my bank, but I figured why not try and find a second step. It's extremely unlikely, but hey, you never know. Here's where I hit 20 range. I was a decent way into this now and at this point I could sense a growing problem. The numbers just weren't adding up. It may look like the bars are getting closer, but at 10.5% knives used and 5.2% of the necessary XP, the difference is 5.3%. Are you seeing the pattern? The numbers are getting further and further apart, and this continued into level 30 where there was a 7.4% difference. This could be a big problem. It was at this point that I started thinking like a true gamer. I knew that at the current rate, my XP would never catch up to my rate of using the knives. I realized now that my calculations didn't account for a very important element, overkill DPS. At level 32, my max hit went up to 5, which was great. The higher the max hit, the more XP each knife can be worth. I was relying on this per knife damage to ramp up the XP gains significantly. The problem was, men only have 7 HP. That means if I hit a 5, my next knife can only max a 2, losing a large portion of the potential XP. I needed a solution fast, otherwise I'd be heading back to Dwarf Jail for a very long time. You're probably thinking the obvious answer. Just kill something with more HP. Chaos Druids are my best source of runes, why not kill those? Well, I ran the DPS calculations and every enemy with more health would result in at least a 20% DPS loss, since I was relying on the insanely low range defensive men, so this wouldn't be a viable option. Instead, I went with plan B. Stack them out. Seriously though, the answer to my problem came in the form of the hottest gear swaps in all of Yanil, switching to the Iron Scimitar at low health. The way I sorted it out is if I had the potential to hit a 4 or 5, which both give decent amount of per knife XP, I'll keep throwing knives. Otherwise, I'll kill them with melee. This maximizes the potential XP per knife, reducing the issue of overkill DPS. Over the next few milestones, the gap started closing again. 6% difference at level 35. 4.7% at level 40, 2.5% at level 43, which is halfway through the total XP needed now. By the way, let me know if you enjoy these types of data visualizations. Subscribe and leave a comment so I can know if I should do them more in the future. Damn, on the fishing trawler, that is so close, but I can't keep that, that's so sad. Quick pause here, I later realized that dropping this was a huge mistake, but I'll come back to why on that later. For now, it's time to finish up the range grind. At level 45 range, just over 60,000 ranged XP, the gap finally closed. With both the XP and knives used being just about 60%, the melee method had worked and I felt like I was almost done slaughtering men when something unexpected happened. Oh my god, of course I wasn't recording when this dropped, but what the hell? A second you nil clue step. Now I actually have a shot at completing a casket. What the sh- This is so rare. Like, we're talking about a 1 in 10,000 chance to find a doable clue step from these men. I- I mean, I have to try it now, don't I? This is absolutely my one and only shot at doing a clue in my chunk. I don't even care what the rewards are, I just want to complete this casket. But it's gonna take a lot of man kills. Speaking of man kills, here's 47 prayer all just from burying regular bones. And 47 ranged. I'm no longer worried about the XP rates, I've been keeping my eye on the numbers, and it's looking good. Okay, I haven't tried clue juggling since the change where clues will stay on the ground while logged out, so I'm a little nervous logging back in here. Wow, okay, it's still on the ground, that's crazy, but thank god they changed that. 
almost done with range at this point, but this lamp marks a new era for me, which is the having level 2 crafting era. This era changes nothing, I'm just calling it that to feel something. And there it is, 50 range, we made it! Let's go, the hunter's crossbow has been unlocked. Before I do anything else, I want to wield the hunter's crossbow and use our new unlock. And here we go, a hunter's crossbow. There we go, it looks really cool, I love the way this thing looks. That is so good. And uh, that's it, that's a chunk task achieved. Level 50 range to wield the hunter's crossbow. We even finished with some knives left over because I was being so careful with my knife usage, but it's nice to know we'll have those in the bank if we need them in the future. I do have two clues on the ground, but before we get back to that, I think it's time for some fun Yanil facts. Get ready, this one's a big one. Drum roll. You, you, uh, you can't, like, stand right next to the wall here there's like a like kind of like a, a gap in the look i'm running out of fun facts okay <laughs> yanil's not that big actually i did slide into the dms of the osrs wiki page on twitter and they told me a few fun facts like for example how if you use the npc contact on bert the sandman while standing right next to him he has some funny dialogue except that's not actually how it works Many NPCs have this type of dialogue, but for some reason, Bert's location data is just completely wrong. If you use NPC contact while standing in the bar, that's when he thinks you're standing right next to him. So, now you know about that, I guess. Back to my clues on the ground, let's talk about the plan. With two clues, I have a small chance for the casket, whereas if I can find a third clue, my chances are now above average to be able to complete it. Four clues would be a guaranteed casket, but even hitting the drop rate on that would be an astronomical task, and I honestly don't have 100 hours to kill 40,000 men. One issue with this grind compared to other chunk accounts that have killed lots of men is that I only have two man spawns, severely limiting my kills per hour, as there tends to be downtime between kills. The range grind ended off with just over 14,000 kills, so we'll see how far we can go with this. We have got the mystery box. Let's go. I gotta reset my clues because I forgot those were on the ground while I was doing that. <laughs> Let's see, do we get something amazing? It could be my lucky day. Come on. Oh god, that's so irritating. I keep getting cabbages from these guys, which is the same rarity as an easy clue. That is truly just taunting me. I hate that. 69 strength and 72 combat on that kill. And 750 total level. Wow, that's a, a lot of levels coming in all at the same time. Okay, I haven't really been showing too many of these clue steps, but I have gotten so many Falador steps. If I was Falador locked, I would have like six caskets by now. I literally have like 10 Falador steps. It's absurd. Woof, another prayer level. Man, this has taken a long time. It's been like almost an hour and a half since I got my last clue drop. This is a little demoralizing, not gonna lie. I'm going insanely dry on clue scrolls right now, but look who it is. She's Reborn is back looking festive as ever. Oh shit. Donkey 4 coming in with the bond. Oh, that is making this so much better. I am over a thousand KC dry on these men. I, I'm like four hours deep without a clue scroll drop. I, I'm, I'm like no, no clue scrolls at all. I don't know what's going on, but that makes it so much better. Thank you so much. Oh my god, thank the lord. Just seeing another clue scroll on the ground after literally like four hours. That feels so good. Okay, at least I know I didn't break the game now. What the hell? Now I'm getting clue scrolls left and right. That's literally... What the, that was like two back to back. But what? What? And that is a huge level right there, 70 strength, getting so extremely strong.
And there it is. This is the 100th clue scroll. Is it the lucky one? No, it's more Faldor. I'm starting to realize that I really, really don't like juggling clues. It's somehow both boring and anxiety inducing at the same time. The only silver lining is that I'm actually gathering a lot of really useful runes, especially mine runes from these kills. But other than that, the lack of visible progress is really wearing on me. Hold up, is that 17,773 tiaras on the ground? It is. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. And this is man killed 20,000. Now, you may see that I have three clues on the ground here, but I'm actually doing something kind of different. I'm actually using a backup clue. This is where that fishing trawler step would have come in really handy. I'm just keeping my next nearest clue scroll in case I end up sending it with less than four clues. I can at least retain the steps on a clue to maybe roll in a future chunk. For example, here's a step in Taverly. Because I might eventually be able to roll the Dark Wizard's Tower here using the portal in the Wizard's Guild, I may be able to cash in this clue in the not so distant future if I'm able to get two or three steps on it. And these runes make another really nice milestone, 2000 mine runes in the bank. Those will be a lot of really good magic experience in the future. I got a visit from one of my favorite new accounts, Pix Axes, aka the Axes Only Iron Man. Go check out his debut episode if you haven't seen it already. He also left me a uh, lot of oysters. This is a deeply suspicious number of oysters. WTF. I'm too high for this. RN. At this point, it had been days without seeing another Yanil step, and the reality of the odds of finding another one started to sink in. I knew I could be stuck doing this for potentially a really long time, and honestly, I have a lot of other things I want to do in this chunk, so I decided to just send it with the two clues and stream it over on Twitch. This is what happened. And there it is. That is the final man kill. To wrap up this clue juggling grind, we're going to use them in the order that we got them. So I think that this is the shop. So let's do it. You're hoping for the insane chance at a back-to-back -back Yanil step from this clue. What clue do we get out of these drawers? Whew, okay, using up our clues is crazy. Falador. Yeah, uh, Mithril Pickaxe Black Plate Body. That is so unbelievably not doable. That is not the clue we're looking to see. We could still get the two-step casket. Here it is. This is the one right here in the house that I've spent the last, pff, I don't know how many hours and probably easily 20 hours. Is this the casket? Do we get it? Two-step casket. Spin for good luck. Spin for good luck. Oh, I forgot. That's going to totally screw. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. Ignore that. Ignore that. <laughs> Casket! The two-step casket! Oh my god! No way! The two-step! Oh my god! The whole clue juggling was for nothing, but you know what? Okay, yeah, that was worth it. Oh my god! No way! Oh! Okay, time to see what is in this. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one open <laughs> that is so that is so, <laughs> so yeah obviously a black longsword firelighters and two purple swedes isn't exactly what i was hoping for but aside from some collection log slots the real reward was just the sense of satisfaction that i can say that against the odds i actually managed to open a casket only in yanil the demotivation I was feeling from the juggling grind is completely gone, and now all I'm feeling is the excitement to finish the goal I set out at the beginning of the episode, to complete everything in the skilling tab of the chunk tasks. But before we get into that, here's a quick fun Yanil fact for you. Except it's not fun. This Yanil fact sucks. It sucks almost as much as the Black Longsword sucks. Remember how I got a Steel Longsword a few episodes ago? Well, it turns out that the Black Longsword is only very slightly better than the Steel Longsword. The biggest disappointment is that they have the same strength bonus. The only real difference is that the Black Longsword has plus 4 to stab and slash, which is an extremely small bonus to DPS and by no means outclasses my Iron Scimitar. So unfortunately, the Black Longsword is nearly useless. Nearly. I had someone point out to me that it's now my best flinch weapon, which may actually come in really handy in the future as there are still some pesky ogres whose large bones I need to uh, extract in the future. Back to the task at hand, there's only one goal left to finish up the skilling tasks. 67 agility. To be able to pass the final obstacle in the agility dungeon. 
Last episode, I left off at level 57, but I actually did a bit of agility in the background while training range, so we're starting off at level 60. If you know your RuneScape math, you know that 60 is the halfway point to 67 in terms of XP, so we've got about 270,000 XP to go. And here's 61 agility. These levels are insanely slow now. The trellis max is out around 10k XP per hour, but in reality, it's more like 5 to 8,000 depending on how much attention I'm paying. Last episode, I talked a lot about the balance ledge in the agility dungeon and how its success rates start to scale very favorably as you get closer to level 65 agility, so I think it's time to go test that out. There's level 63 agility, no clue what happened to level 62. It probably blazed by so fast I didn't even notice though because damn this XP is good. 11k per hour with minimal effort. Now that's what I'm talking about, these XP rates are a chunk account's dream. Another mystery box, these are always exciting, still looking for that mithril scimitar, what do we got? 20 nature runes, okay that's still actually really good. So I mentioned earlier that I made some more discoveries about the agility dungeon this episode. It turns out that the damage you take from falling off the ledge is actually based on a percent of your total health. It seems like it'll always deal 20% of your current health rounded down. That means that the optimal way to do this is to keep your health low to reduce falling damage, but that's a little tricky when the spiders below poison you. So you'll see that I try to keep my health around half while training for the rest of this. There's 64 agility! If you remember from last episode, 65 is supposedly when you stop falling off the ledge entirely, so that's something to look forward to. Alright, so this is going great, but I have one complaint, which is this stupid chaos druid who's constantly hitting me for like 5 and wasting my food. He's level 37, which means he'll stop being aggressive to me at level 75, which is actually only 2 combat levels away, so I'm actually just gonna go do that real quick. Oh, I also almost forgot that I actually can make a new best in slot shield upgrade, the iron kite shield, so there we go, now it's a nice little defensive bonus, and it, it looks actually quite good. I mean, it looks like a freaking, freaking professional. And there's 75 combat, we will no longer be bullied by the Chaos Druid Warrior. <laughs> Let's get back to agility. You got something to say now, buddy? Huh? You got, you got something to say now? I didn't think so. Agility and good news either I got really really lucky or you actually stopped failing to cross the ledge at level 64 Not 65 because I didn't fall a single time that whole level just two more now Hey, hello, mr. Genie and this lamp gets us to level 3 crafting I'm lamping crafting with the hopes of spinning my own bowstrings at some point in the future Wait, what the f <laughs> wow hello agility Lol. man the ledge is being used grief time lol Easy come, easy go, I guess. 66 agility, just one more now. These levels are in the ballpark of four to five hours each at this point, so I am ready to be done. And let me tell you that what we unlock at level 67 isn't just another arbitrary obstacle to pass, it actually unlocks my absolute best magic training method that I'll be using until I'm done with the chunk. I'll be going into more detail next episode, but for now, just know that it's really exciting. Oh my goodness, absolute Chad, don't say ass, with the bond, what an absolute king! Alright, we have turned the object markers off for this one. This is the final ledge cross for 67 agility. You can now access the Yanil dungeons? Using rubble climb? This is such a weird message, what the hell? Okay. That is the level we've been looking for for so long, 67 agility, this easily took over 60 hours in total, probably closer to 70 with a good chunk of that being in this episode. That leaves just one thing to do. I've been waiting to do this since the day I started this account. There is the pile of rubble and there we go, we've climbed it! Task complete! That's the last one for the skilling tab. There's a lot of interesting stuff up here, but that is a topic for next time. I'm coming for you, Salarin. Well folks, this brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for hanging out. The progress here took over 90 hours to complete. We completed the entire skilling tab and got a couple of magic levels to boot. And I say that with enthusiasm because everything we've done so far pales in comparison to the time it's going to take to reach level 66 magic in Yanil alone. Aside from that, I still can't believe we completed an easy clue just in Yanil, but I mean, you know, YouTuber luck. 
As always, the music in this episode was all original compositions by me, and you can find them in the soundtrack playlist in the description along with my other region locked series, Sir Lumington. Definitely hit that subscribe button because next episode we're diving into another incredibly obscure and interesting piece of content, and you know it's gonna do massive things for the account. But until then, bye bye.